I think when we talk about um, what we're trying to invest in and how we move things forward, there's been a lot of work that's been done on that application layer, you know, on these different kinds of ways of interacting with the data. Um, that's not where the kind of some of the stability and other issues come from. We, we're still working on uh, a relational database technology uh, that is not scaling to the, to the needs that we know that we have. You know, Paul is in, in some very great ways has pushed that technology about as far as you can go. Paul, you, you were loading something like 8,000 exome sequence based variants into your platform. How long did that take? <laughs> well, there you go. Um, I mean, these are, when we talk about scale, right, and we talk about reliability, those are the issues we're trying to address. And those issues are addressed, as, as Kay said, and, and as EK has said well, is that we have to work, put in some, some hard work here. Not, we don't need to, to, the hard work we put in here is not going to change this, right? And it can fit directly into this, but this is where you basically got to do some, some heavy construction if you're going to make, you know, loading 8,000 exome variants uh, tractable in real time, or let's talk about what's coming down the pike, 100,000 full genome variant files, right? And that's just Genomics England, or the million genome variants that are being done in the U.S. You know, if we want to be the platform for that, there's some heavy construction here, and that's what we're talking about. Um, not talking about changing everything up here. And when we talk about how we do that together, it's really about we keep running these elements and these elements. We do some heavy lifting over here on the side while this keeps running. And then we have a platform that we can slide back in. And then everything that we've done needs minor modifications. If we have good API standards, we have well-published API standards, they can work on those different database structures. So I think that's what we're thinking about. Um, one of the things that we talked about a little bit is this. Um, release models and uh, you know we had a discussion about this a couple of years ago about release models and uh, I heard this brought up again today and I'm not saying we want to go here but I bring it up for discussion and let's think about it I want our PMC you know since our PMC is all here uh, to take a look at this and, and consider it right so the Ubuntu release process is it's not magical but it's a it's a six-month process from beginning to end it's run basically from a start, which is saying, okay, now we're, we're, we're freezing things here, right? We do, somehow the timings are on my slides. Um, you, you have a start of the process, there's a planning, there's a quick work on, and this work on features is feature integration. These are features that are written, as it says here. Um, sure you will. <laughs> uh, it's, it's driven by, in fact, having very strict freeze dates. Uh, the feature freeze is first. The rest of the cycle is fo focused on fixing bugs. It takes incredible discipline. And part of that discipline is that everything that's written has to be written to the master branch or it doesn't go in. And one of the challenges that we've had as a community is that we have people writing to lots of different branches of the code. You know, I remember when, when Sasha gave us this fantastic demonstration of, of the Smart R. And I think everybody is really excited. And then on that conference call, people said, well, how do I get that in my version? It's like, well, it's written against the research version because that's what I needed to write it against to get the functionality I needed. Um, we have to do some extra work to get it into the master branch. And now you've done that work, right? We're getting there, right? Okay. <laughs> but I think that's what I want to challenge the this group to do is, is say, okay, you know, we worked really hard to take, you know, a year and a half ago to take 12 different branches of the code base and build a master branch, right? We have that. And that master branch is what we develop releases off of. And if we want to get to something where we can have a really, you know, time planned, scalable release structure, then we have to, as a community, start adopting real coding standards and development standards that allow us to get here and say, okay, go, here's the date that we're going to start. If your stuff is on the master branch, it's written to the master branch, it's pulled from the master branch, it's written to the right code standards, it has data, it has unit tests, it has functional tests, so that that can be done in a continuous integration process. And to John's point the other day, it's, a, it's, it's in a position where we can run a nightly build and a nightly smoke test on everything, then we can run this process. But we're not there yet today. And that's what we're working to do. That's what the PMC is working on in the release process. So 
I just wanted to take a look and say, well, is that something that's really tractable for us? So this is, this is the open hub uh, summary of the Ubuntu project. And you look at the number of committers, you know, it's, it's actually not that big compared to where we are with Transmart. In fact, in Transmart, we have a lot more commits, a lot, you know, a smaller number perhaps of contributors. But overall, we're in the same order of magnitude here. And so I think it's something tractable if we, if we apply the discipline that we need to do to it. So what, what is a schedule like that? What's nice is when we can learn from other people is we can take a look at this and our PMC over the, the course of the next uh, six weeks will do this is evaluate all the steps that are very nicely documented and fully featured that take you all the way through a process of getting an Ubuntu release out and we'll ask the question, can we do this as a community? And if we can, we'll come back to the membership and say, here's how we do it. You know, is this where we are? Can we do this? And that's, that's what we're about as a community. You know, we can't do it alone. I, we can't go in and force you, right? Um, but what we can do is, you know, I, I go back to the analogy back in, in, uh, in Paris. Peter had, had this wonderful slide. It was titled Herding Cats, right? And, you know, herding cats is, is really interesting. I think it was a, the cat sled, right? And if you think about, you know, I like, I like the dog sled example. It's a really good one. You know, if you have, a, a, you have eight dogs hooked to a sled and they all go different directions, the sled doesn't move. The sled just doesn't move, right? What has to happen is we have to have them all going the same direction. And what we need to do as a community is all go the same direction or we're not going to get there. And so we have, we have the governance in place. I think we have some good models to follow. We're working on those key pieces. We've got some great technology innovations here but we all have to get together and go the same direction. And that's what we're really asking you to do. So, um, what I want to do, oh, I'm on perfect timing too. Look at that, 328. So that's, that's where I want to kind of leave you in terms of the platform discussions. We've had some great discussions here. We've heard a lot coming, you know, from, from Etrix, from Trait, uh, from other, other groups, you know, pharma companies that are part of our effort, nonprofits, the Michael J. Fox Foundation. So, um, there's a lot for, for us to digest, and I think what we've done as a foundation over the past year is put the right governance model in place. Uh, what I haven't shown you is we've put the right IP structure in place so we can manage these kinds of projects going forward so the IP is all cleaned up, etc. We're taking the steps to be, what I like to think of is an Apache-like open source foundation for this biomedical research area. And I think with the addition of our, our second open source project, Open Bell joining us, is that you know we have that opportunity to make sure that we do things right uh, and we do things that are really synergistic with what we're doing with Transmart in this translational research space. So uh, why don't we take a break? I'll throw together a few uh, slides to summarize the event, but uh, I think from the from where we are, that that to us is from the platform perspective, uh, where we are and, and where we're going. And I, I don't know if anybody wants to ask any questions. Anyone want to ask questions? Okay, well, why don't we take a 15-minute break? Actually, give me, give me a little bit more. I'm sorry? 30-minute break, because I have to put slides together. If you have a slide you want me to put into our summary, send it to me by email. So keith.elliston at transmartfoundation.org. But I'm putting together a, a short summary of the meeting, and then we'll end up and go. Okay, well, I, I think we've saved something very special for last, and uh, I'd like to thank a number of people uh, for this uh, who've helped us out with this. So, anybody have any idea what's special about today? Yeah, you know. <laughs> anybody else know why today is special? What's today? Today is October 21st, 2015. It's now 4.17 p.m. So in about 12 minutes, <laughs> he will arrive. And what's he going to see? He's going to see Transmart, right? <laughs> Paul, 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 it's like, I, I love this movie, right? It's a great movie. Um, one of the things that's really nice is that, you know, we work with the Michael J. Fox Foundation, and Michael J. Fox is the star of this movie, right? Um, Paul brought that to my attention. And then 
One thing I, I wanted to bring to Paul's attention is that I'm not unaware of this. Those are the shoes at the Michael J. Fox Foundation, and uh, Ken Kubota took this picture last spring. So uh, uh, I think it's, this is a pretty interesting time for us, interesting day. It's, it's a fantastic thing that's happening now. I think it's it's fate, right, right, Paul? So um, I want to go through and do a quick summary, uh, a summary of the meeting, and uh, whatnot. But I think it's it's really fitting that we're talking about, you know. Back to the future, and this is when we arrive in the future, right? Uh, it's a really good paradigm uh, in, uh, for us. So, uh, first off, um, I want to say thank you to our host site. Uh, the host site has been great. Everybody, who, who, who thinks the host site did a good job? And of course, Paulina should stand up because she's been the one who's made it all happen. So I think it's it's it was you know an excellent place to be. I think it's it's really good for those of us here, translational scientists, developers, you know, um, you know pointless overhead and management, uh, to be here, uh, you know, working actually in the hospital where patients are being treated and being really close to what's happening in precision medicine, and it makes it gives us it gives us the right background for what we're doing. And so I want to appreciate I appreciate Garrett and Jan Willem and the work that you and Ramon did uh, in putting this together. So thanks a lot, guys. It was great. So uh, if we move on a little bit, um, one of the great things that makes this happen is that uh, you know registration for the meeting is free. We try to keep it that way. That's because it's, we're supported by by our members and by our sponsors. I just want to call out you know key members of the foundation uh, that are you know participating in this overall. Uh, thank you very much. Um, but uh, I think it you know as a member-driven organization, members are not only important to us for support, but also for direction and leadership and. You know, on some of you here are, are not just represented on our 3C committees as, as members, but also on our board of directors. So I just want to say thanks to our members for making this happen and, and giving us that governance and leadership. Uh, the other thing that really makes this possible is our, our sponsors. Um, you know, one of the great things is people talk about open source. Everybody thinks of open source as free, right? Um, Open source is hardly free. It, it's uh, just there's no license fee. Um, the same with this this conference, right? The conference is free, uh, but it it costs money, and, and our sponsors actually commit that and work with us to make that happen. So I just want to again thank our our platinum sponsor, Ranch of Biosciences. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> our gold sponsors, the Hive, Thomson Reuters, and Dexter. Thanks, guys. Our bronze sponsors, ITTM and Imperial College. And then our dinner sponsor and lunch sponsors, Converge Health and BT. You know, I should have put the comparison slide of our sponsors from last year and our sponsors this year because uh, the number went up substantially. And uh, what I can say is that we had almost exactly a doubling of our sponsorship support for this meeting. And so while it doesn't cover all the costs for us, it really defrays the cost and makes it possible. So thanks very much. Um, one of the groups that worked behind the scenes uh, for the conference that you might not be aware of is the planning committee. And uh, the planning committee uh, worked uh, really over the past six months uh, and plus uh, to pull all this together, to, to bring the talks together, the sponsorships together, uh, the key events for the hackathon and, and other key things that we did uh, over the last three days. And so I'd like to specifically ask uh, if the the uh, organizing committee members that are here to just like raise a hand or stand up. So we have Julie and Ramon and uh, David. Uh, we have Vard. Um, I know there's a few more that have been here, but thanks very much to the organizing committee. We really appreciate the help. And uh, anyone who wants to be a part of organizing next year, um, I heard a lot of good suggestions uh, over how to add different aspects to our meeting. We kind of had the same format the last uh, last two years anyway, uh, and I think for next year we're going to look at revamping things a little bit based upon some of the key feedback and input. And I'd ask you all to remember those ideas and suggestions. If you want to send them to me now, I'll keep them on hand. But if you want to be part of the organizing committee next year, just let me know, and I will bring in there. Paul, you will be a part of the organizing committee, absolutely. Um, 
fantastic. Yeah, Rudy's been really good about doing post-event surveys. We did for this the Datathon uh, for this event and others. So uh, you know, when you see that, please fill it out. You know, add your comments and whatnot, and we'll we'll take those forward. Yes. Oh, the, the, yeah, that's a, a good point. So uh, Paul and I were, were talking about some of the, the key themes that we, we had this year, and there's been a lot of talk about how I2B2 and Transmart can, can work more closely together. And next year, I think you're all familiar with the fact that the foundation alternates its annual meeting between Europe and the U.S. So last year was University of Michigan uh, in Ann Arbor, uh, this year uh, here in Amsterdam. Next year we rotate back to the U.S., um, Harvard has offered to, uh, to sponsor our annual meeting next year uh, and uh, to do that in conjunction with I2B2, to so bring I2P2 people together with Transmart people and have a joint meeting. So that's something we're going to work on and see if we can make happen. But I appreciate it and as Paul said, it sounds like Zach and, and fantastic. So let's, let's do that. Uh, that'll be exciting. Besides, then I won't have to travel. Uh, <laughs> I won't have jet lag as an excuse then, <laughs> but that's fantastic. So um, that's great. The other thing I wanted to, to get to is um, we had a lot of help here uh, this year from our session chairs, and so uh, I want the session chairs just to raise a hand. We got you know Peter, Keith, Ramon, uh, Jay, Vard, David. You know I think Sherry. I think Sherry went to get a coffee for me because she saw I was jet lagged. Um, but Sherry as well. I mean, you guys did a great job. It's wonderful. Um, for me, it was a it was a difficult thing this year because we didn't have Kevin, who really organizes things and runs things. You can see I'm not the organizing guy. Uh, Kevin has been the organizing guy. Uh, I think we've done pretty well. Keith and and others of the team have stepped in. Peter and Terry. Uh, Alex was actually helping out uh, Alex quite a well. Uh, so it's great to have the team here to do that support, and I want to thank all you guys for, for executing a great meeting. And then finally, I, you know, I thought about throwing together a bunch of slides to try and point out what were the, the cool highlights of the meeting and it would take, uh, take too much time to do, but I don't know about you guys, but the thing that really impressed me today was listening to, to Boss Bloom's talk. That was, that was one of the best talks I've, I've ever seen. And I think for us to, to sit here, you know, and, and number one, that, that we were able to attract, you know, him here to talk to us. And, and he was able to take us through this. You know, it's terrific. If you haven't seen uh, his, his video, you should take a look at it. Uh, it's really impressive. And I think, you know, I read a few months ago, I read Eric Topol's group, which is, is called, uh, Eric Topol wrote this book called The Patient Will See You Now. And it's about the changing roles in healthcare. And it goes how... The physician has gone from God, right, to now being, you know, uh, just a part of the healthcare system, and how the patient is really empowered. And he talks about how his patients now always come in armed with their Google searches and their, you know, stuff coming out of the Mayo site, etc. And that it really changes the nature of healthcare. And I think, you know, Boss gave us the next level of that. Um, so if you haven't read Eric's book, number one, I'd recommend it. But secondly, I think this is this for us is is the challenge. How do we take, you know, from a research perspective, the information that we're gleaning together and pull it into actionable elements that we can provide back to these clinicians and these networks? So to me, that's that's my take-home message. We had a lot of great discussions about technology, about capability. We did said some detail things. We had some 30,000-foot level things. But at this high level, I think that's really the guide for us, is how do we, what's, what's our responsibility in this as scientists? to be able to work in this clinical research environment and enable this personalized medicine approach that, that guys like Boss are implementing on the outside. And I think this, this study that he talked about a bit is, I think, a, a, a seminal study where they've taken you know, Parkinson's patients you know, equipped with Pebble watches and Android devices and collected you know, continuous 24-hour streaming information from these patients. You know where that data is going to end up? It's going into Transmart. Okay. Yeah, it's going into Transmart. That's what we're doing, right? That's the challenge that we have. That's the mission that we're on, right? There's not another group in the world doing this. <laughs> this is the one. And so that's that's what we need to take out of this this discussion. We have lots of things to do. We've got a lot of things that we got to work on. A lot of things that we want to fix and that we want to make better. But that's the mission, and we're the guys to do it.
And so I think that's where we are as a community is, is getting ourselves together and taking ourselves, you know, back to the future, right? So, question? So, the other thing I wanted to, to, to finish with is, uh, here's our group photo from this year. Geez, we hardly fit, right? We hardly fit, which was amazing. Yep. And so this is the this was actually tweeted. Alex uh, had this tweeted. It's been retweeted a bunch of times. If you go, it, it is linked with the hashtag uh, TF uh, Annual 15, which is the hashtag we've been using for the meeting. So if you want to take a look at it, it's there. If you want to retweet it, it's there. You want you know, it's great to to get this this group together and not only you know be inspired by someone like Boss Bloom, but to inspire others as well. So with that, I think it's uh, it's really great. I've, I've had a great meeting. I appreciate everybody coming. And if I've done this right, uh, in about 10 seconds, it'll be back to the future time. And so what I wanted to do was actually end on back to the future. This is the time when the future arrives. So you know, I should put up a clock. I'm waiting. I don't have the second hand on the watch. <laughs> There it is, 429. Yeah. So it's 429, October 21st, 2015. Uh, we've had a fantastic meeting. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and let's go back to the future.